OU Football Preview Show. Brought to you by your local sponsors, Eskridge Lexus, Eskridge Honda, the Hal Smith Restaurant Group, including Louie's Grill and Bar, Knippelmeyer Chevrolet, the Shack Seafood Restaurant, Lorek Ranch Home Furnishings, and the Trails Golf Club. Now here's your hosts, Ricky and Al Eshbach. Hello sports fans and welcome to the OU Football Bowl Show. I'm Rick Heath, with me this time, Mark Rogers. Mark, welcome. Rick, it's good to be here. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, in the bowl we just mentioned, OU plays Clemson in the Russell Athletic Bowl from Orlando, Florida. Kind of an obscure bowl, but a great setting. Yeah, it is a good setting, and Oklahoma's not been to Florida for a while for a bowl game. They haven't played Clemson since Barry Switzer's last game in 1988. And Clemson's a good team. Uh, they come from the ACC, played Florida State close this year, and they've got a good program. It's a chance to see Brent Venables again, and I'm sure he'll be motivated to go up against his old team. As well he should be. Uh -huh. uh, you know, and, and they're still close, I'm sure. They still have a good friendship, but he was not uh, exactly uh, asked fired. to stay. Yeah, he fired. was not asked to <laughs> stay. Fired. So, you know, he will want to have his number one rated defense play well against the Sooners. Yeah, I mean, they didn't say, hey, Brent, pack your stuff and get out of here. I think they said, you know, it might be best for you to try to pursue some other opportunities. And that's a pretty good opportunity that came uh, came up. Dabo Swinney is, is a good coach, and Clemson's been known to recruit good defensive players. And they've got some good defensive players this year. But I, the motivation aspect will be there. It'll be there for both sides because I think that they're uh, – going to be competitive on the OU staff too. Well, it'll be it'll be a very competitive game and you know as you said Mark uh, OU has not been to Florida in a while and so this should be a it'll be a good game for TV good game for the OU fans and we'll talk a little bit more about which OU team shows up. I don't uh, know I can't answer that question. <laughs> we don't know <laughs> I have yet. no idea. Hey but we're at Sam's Optical here on 74th and South Walker Rick Heath Mark Rogers with you and Mark one last thing before we go to break here is is that OU is coming in, and they've got Trevor Knight back. I think that's a big plus. I think that helps. I think still, no matter what kind of effort you see in the bowl game, they're going to be worried about his long-term viability at the position, if he can stay healthy, uh, running the football down the field. Uh, got to be a little bit worried about his passing, if he's going to be accurate. But it is a positive to have Trevor Knight back. He's played well at times this year. He's had some other games where he's not been so good, but uh, for the most part, it's been positive this season. It has been. Hey, and if you're looking for OU Russell Athletic Bowl tickets, tickets unlimited, give them a call, 364-7500. Or if you want concert tickets, Thunder tickets, go to oklahomatickets.com. We'll be right back after this. It's Tommy time. It's time for smiling, styling, and profiling in your cool and comfortable as an ocean breeze Tommy Bahama fashion for men and women from Pinpoint Resource. From head to toe, Pinpoint has the ultra cool quality name brand fashions like Alan Edmund, Johnston Murphy Shoes, Enro Shirts, and Bill Skaggy. Great fashion, great value, and always great customer service. Pinpoint Resource, where value exceeds our customers' expectations. Pinpoint Resource, 50 Pin Place. Hi, it's Sam at Louie's Grill and Bar, reminding you that the weather is hot. So come cool off at Louie's and try one of our delicious salads, like our turkey chicken club salad. At Louie's, where you come for the food and stay for the fun. Why have people trusted Sam's Optical for over 30 years for their eyeglass needs? I, I, I think I'm the new kid on the block with Sam's uh, As a matter of fact, when I came here, I wasn't coming here to buy glasses. I was coming here to get some information to where the doctor's office was next door. And just the aviance and the atmosphere. After they gave me the information I needed, I went to my eye doctor. Then I came back in and felt like I was at home. Sam's Optical for over 30 years, bringing you the best prices and service at any of Sam's locations. Lorick Ranch, 4111 West Reno in Oklahoma City is where you'll find the perfect blend of elegance and rustic to fit any room in your home. Living room suits, dining rooms, bedrooms, and the den. And the kids are going to love our bunk bed selection. So whatever home or room you're looking to decorate, Lorick Ranch has you covered. Welcome to Lorick Ranch, where rustic meets elegance. Y hablamos español. Lorick Ranch, 4111 West Reno in Oklahoma City. Knippelmeyer Chevrolet. Knippelmeyer Chevrolet. Knippelmeyer Chevrolet. Come on down and join our family, and we'll shake on it. Knippelmeyer Chevrolet. And welcome back to the OU Football Bowl edition here from Sam's Optical. Rick Heath, Mark Rogers. Mark, now, two teams, OU and Clemson, kind of going in different directions. OU lost three out of their last six. Clemson, on the other hand, won eight of nine and, uh, and won, you know, in a good fashion. 
in that ACC bracket. Yeah, Clemson is coming off a, a victory over South Carolina, which is very important. They haven't had a whole lot of success against Steve Spurrier. Their, uh, their one loss, they had some injuries uh, against Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech dominated the ball running the football against Clemson, and I think that's a key for Oklahoma. They can have some success if they will commit to the run and establish that. Samaj P. Ryan, I think, will play. He has not practiced as of yet, uh, but should be in the game, and that's a big weapon for you. Well, and it should be. Now, you mentioned earlier how well Trevor Knight was pass or throw. You know, with his injury, I'm not sure that they can put him in a running situation. You know, not wanting to risk another injury to that neck. I think it's a, that's a very difficult spot to be in as a uh, coaching staff at the University of Oklahoma. They fell in love with Trevor Knight with the way that he improvised in practice. You know, got to let the guy improvise on the field. If you try to scheme the offense where he doesn't run the football, then you really tie one hand behind your back. I, I think also, Rick, a big key for me with Trevor Knight is executing fakes, executing the, the mesh play in the zone read. Trevor Knight didn't do that very well this year. Uh, I think Cody Thomas did it a lot better. So we'll see if uh, if Knight improves in that aspect, because I think that's a big reason why Samaj P. Ryan started to pick up more and more success uh, down the stretch, is that that fake game and the uh, read option play was executed pretty well by by Cody Thompson. Now, he didn't throw the ball very well, but he did execute the running game well. Wouldn't that be nice if they could have the combination of two, you know, the, the fake, faking and the run game play of Thomas and maybe the arm of Trevor Knight, but unfortunately they're going to have to play one or the other. Right. But And you mentioned, you know, Trevor Knight, I think he really plays better when he's had some success running the ball. You know, I think he gives him more confidence, he feels better in the flow of the game, and it makes him more accurate if they get him out a little bit on the, on the end and you know, let him throw as he's looking at the field instead of having a drop back pass. Well, I'm going to completely agree with that. I think that if you're worried about his health, and in a sense that if he gets another neck injury or a stinger there, that it could be a serious injury, then you don't play. I mean, you just have to say it's a similar situation to David Ash in Texas. He kept having reoccurring concussions, and you finally have to make a tough decision and just say, son, it's best that you just don't play the sport anymore. Go on and be successful in life. You can't let uh, something like football get in the way of, you know, your life. Uh, but if Trevor Knight has been cleared to play and they feel that he is 100% good to go, there's no injury leading up to the game in practice, and I think you got to get him hit right away because I think that that makes him used to the game. You're a little leery when you haven't been out there for a while and taking that physical contact. And once you get hit a couple of times, it loosens you up. And so I think that's a big, big key for Trevor Knight. Well, and I completely agree, Mark. He's got to get hit to get, you know, to feel that he's going to be okay. Because there's going to be, there's not really going to be any hitting for sure in practice, you know. And so they've got to get him comfortable doing it. And perhaps they should do it right off the bat. But I tell you what, they should find out as soon as possible. Can Sterling Shepard help? Because if Sterling Shepard is healthy, he helps that passing game immensely. Yes, he does. And that's been a weird injury. He's He's tried to give it a go almost every week and then made it one play or two plays and then had to come back out and I don't really understand how you handle that if it's a pain tolerance issue or if it's just that I mean if, if you feel like he's not gonna be good to go Thursday in practice and it doesn't work why do you try again on Saturday and then why do you try again the next week and the next week I think they should have just shut that down and said well we'll come back and revisit it again in a month but they're so I think desperate to have someone in that receiving court that they can get the ball to that they wanted to keep trying every week and hoping for the best it just didn't happen hopefully that you know a six-week almost eight week now since his injury uh, maybe that's enough time to get him completely well but he is certainly a difference maker in that passing attack and without him it limits not only their ability to get into the wideouts which with only two against OSU two completions to a wideouts but it takes away the confidence factor for the quarterback whoever it is whether Trevor Knight or whomever that's a big issue because a lot of times we just look at the quarterback and we focus so much attention there that we don't perhaps look at the wide receivers and think hey, you know, uh, there could be a problem on this end too. So those guys haven't got a whole lot of separation this year, and, and the quarterbacks probably should get a little bit of a break there. Yeah, and Clemson's got a really good defense, number one rated defense, as we said, mm -hmm. in, in the country is in, in, in terms of limiting the number of, of yards per game. But OU's offensive line should be able to carve out some lanes for P. Ryan, Ford, whomever is going to be running the ball for OU. Clemson is very good. They have a top prospect at defensive end. They also have a very good middle linebacker. 
But and they have given up points in games this year. They give up a bunch of points to Georgia. And I think Georgia's a pretty similar football team to Oklahoma. They like to run the ball, and they have a stable of good running backs. And uh, they were able to solve that Clemson defense in the season opener. They gave up a bunch of points to North Carolina. It was kind of a multiple attack. And then Georgia Tech controlled the line of scrimmage. They had a lot of success. Another game, South Carolina was hurt at the end of the year, so they shut them down. Uh, although South Carolina did move the ball in that game. They missed a couple of field goals. And then if you look at the uh, the rest of the ACC, they played some weak teams. They didn't. Louisville was kind of limited on offense. Um, they didn't play Miami, and uh, they didn't play Duke. And so I don't know about their schedule. This number one rated defense, I think we're going to see a little bit more of a high-scoring game. Than you think. Well, I, I think it will be, too, because even though it's number one rated, they gave up a lot of points. Mm -hmm. You know, the yards may have been limited, but the points were not. Hey, let me tell you about the Shack Seafood and Oyster Bar. Shack's got three great locations in the metro area, one in Norman on Ed Noble Parkway, one in May and Memorial, and one on 63rd Street, just west of Broadway Extension. The Shack Seafood and Oyster Bar, the freshest oysters and the best Cajun food available at the Shack's three locations in the metro. We'll be right back after this. It's Tommy time. It's time for smiling, styling, and profiling in your cool and comfortable as an ocean breeze Tommy Bahama fashion for men and women from Pinpoint Resource. From head to toe, Pinpoint has the ultra cool quality name brand fashions like Alan Edmund, Johnston Murphy Shoes, Enro Shirts, and Bill's Khaki. Great fashion, great value, and always great customer service. Pinpoint Resource, where value exceeds our customers' expectations. Pinpoint Resource, 50 Pin Place. Knippelmeyer Chevrolet. Knippelmeyer Chevrolet. Knippelmeyer Chevrolet. Come on down and join our family, and we'll shake on it. Knippelmeyer Chevrolet. Hi, it's Sam at Louie's Grill and Bar, reminding you that the weather is hot. So come cool off at Louie's and try one of our delicious salads, like our turkey chicken club salad. At Louie's, where you come for the food and stay for the fun. Ready to get rid of that old mower and move up to a Honda? Well, you couldn't have picked a better time. Choose from 10 different models with features you just won't find on any other mower. Whether you decide on the rock solid HRR series or the amazing HRX series, you owe it to yourself to check out these incredible mowers and see what sets Honda apart from all others. Visit the website you see here for specials going on right now and find the Honda Power Equipment dealer nearest you. Honda Lawn Mowers. Very smart. Lurk Ranch, 4111 West Reno in Oklahoma City is where you'll find the perfect blend of elegance and rustic to fit any room in your home. Living room suits, dining rooms, bedrooms, and the den. And the kids are going to love our bunk bed selection. So whatever home or room you're looking to decorate, Lork Ranch has you covered. Welcome to Lork Ranch, where rustic meets elegance. Y hablamos español. Lork Ranch, 4111 West Reno in Oklahoma City. Why have people trusted Sam's Optical for over 30 years for their eyeglass needs? I, I, I think I'm the new kid on the block with Sam's uh, As a matter of fact, when I came here, I wasn't coming here to buy glasses. I was coming here to get some information to where the doctor's office was next door. And just the aviance and the atmosphere. After they gave me the information I needed, I went to my eye doctor. Then I came back in and felt like I was at home. Sam's Optical for over 30 years, bringing you the best prices and service at any of Sam's locations. And welcome back to the OU Football Bowl Edition. Rick Heath, Mark Rogers with you from Sam's Optical here at 74th and South Walker. Best selection of frames, whether it is a fashion frame for you ladies or a sport frame for you guys or even kids frames. Every fashionable frame for you ladies and the sport frame for you guys here at Sam's Optical. It's an Oklahoma-owned business and family-run. It's a great, friendly place to be. Come by Sam's Optical on 74th and South Walker. Mark, let's talk a little bit about OU's defense. Um, would it be so nice that we could solve Mike Stoops' problem just by talking about it? Right, yeah. But, unfortunately, it's not that solvable. Mike Stoops has got some big problems on the defensive side. You're not going to have Geno Grissom, uh, the defensive tackle position, who was a huge part of the win over Alabama a year ago. I, I'm with you. I don't know, Rick, what you try to do. You need a pass rush to help the guys out in the secondary, but they've had some confusion back there this season. The defensive line seems to have worn down. They were very fresh at the beginning of the year. Philosophically, they haven't been very aggressive. They've dropped a lot of guys into coverage. But the good news is, is that this is a Clemson team that will be without its starting quarterback. Um, Deshaun Watson, who is a uh, number one or two quarterback in the country, as a freshman. And they go with Cole Stout, six touchdowns, ten interceptions. 
and he's a guy that can be a statue back there in the pocket a little bit. I, I would think Mike's got to be pretty aggressive and come after him and, and rattle him a little bit, and that'll help the OUD. Well, even though he's a senior, he you know he just hasn't been the answer. As one of true freshman came in and, and took over for him, so that helped OU because he's not a mobile quarterback. He's not going to break loose uh, like Boykin and, and scoot up 20 yards on you. Um, so you're right. He's going to be back there where they can get pressure on him. And if they can match up with the two good receivers that Clemson has, they got Artavia Scott's a freshman. Yeah. He had some really good numbers. And, 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 and uh, the, the sophomore receiver was their leading receiver. So they've got good receivers, but Stout is not all that great. They got a freshman running back that got, you know, 700 something yards, but most of that was in the last few games. So they're not great on offense, but. OU hasn't been great on defense, so we have a we have the lesser of two evils right there. I think you got to be careful that you don't get beat on some pass plays, and just be content there that you know you don't want to let them get behind you. But that's one area where OU has really has really struggled. The quarterback and wide receiver uh, are two of their best recruits that they've got, and, and, uh, and that's those are the guys that Oklahoma's going to have to stop. Yeah, you know, and they're looking at it right now is OU's yeah. defense is going to have enough time to clean up some problems. Now, we thought that that would happen during the year. It didn't. Uh, it was still evident. The major problems were still evident against OSU. But last year against yeah. Alabama, they were able to use that time, practice time, leading up to the bowl game to really clean up some problems. The only thing an Oklahoma fan can hope for is they can clean up the same type of problems, only this time they got them on offense and defense. Yeah, I think both sides of the football against Alabama last year was a brilliant game plan. I thought Josh Heupel did an excellent job of keeping Alabama off its feet defensively with Trevor Knight, and I thought that Mike Stoops manned up outside and committed to stopping oh, yeah. the run against Alabama and forced them to throw the football. And one of those things that you like to do as a coach is that you want to get the other team away from what it does best. Alabama ran the football best last year. They threw it pretty good. We saw Amari Cooper break out this year even more than he did a year ago. And Alabama hit some big plays on Oklahoma, but they also made some mistakes in that game, which cost them dearly. I, I think defensively for Clemson, what OU would like to see is come attack the quarterback. And I, I think we'll see a little bit more aggressive. They've got more time to prepare for this game. It's not near as much of a daunting task as it was a year ago against Alabama. Uh, but I, I think Oklahoma has a good, good, good game plan. Yeah, the statistic I liked is Cole South's got six TDs, ten interceptions. Yeah, yeah. You know, if they can intercept McCarron like they did last year against Alabama, surely they might be able to get a couple picks against Stout if they can get pressure on him and he throws it up. And I think those turnovers will help them tremendously in, in, you know, to their advantage of being confident and getting pressure on that. Uh, you know, Mike's dude has gotten a lot of heat, and rightly so. But what we really need to look at as well is, hey, when you're in the Big 12, you go up against really good quarterbacks and really good offensive coordinators, That's some of the best in the country, and I think that it will be a relative break for it. It's going to be tougher on the offense in this game because Clemson's got some players on defense, but it's going to be a little bit easier on the defense because that ACC offense of Clemson is not like these in the Big 12. But a no. team like Texas Tech, better offense than Clemson. Not a good football team, not a better football team, but much better offense. Better offense, better scheme. Yeah. Cle Clemson doesn't have to have a great scheme in the ACC. They just have to have a good defense, mm -hmm. and that carried them this year. And I don't know that that is good enough to carry them in the bowl game. Right, yeah, I agree. I think it'll be a uh, much, much better performance for the Oklahoma defense. You know, I know you, the best thing about it is they're going to have a chance to practice and get some repetitions and study what, what you do. You've got six weeks to study instead of one week, you know. Well, more more reps for Stephen Parker and uh, Jordan Thomas, the two freshmen that they really like in the secondary. And uh, those guys, Bob Stoops didn't put them out there very much at the beginning of the year, but he had to put them out there at the end of the season. And I think they're going to be good players, so uh, it will be good to see more of them. Yeah, I think so too. And you know, I know one of the things going back to OU's offense is. is Clemson's defense has got a good solid defensive line, but the OU's offensive strength is their offensive line, yeah. and I think that'll help. Yeah, big tackles, you push those guys around with Oklahoma's tackles, and the guards are physical players. I agree. It'll be a battle. It, it will. It's going to be physical up front. And, and that's what I like to see. Hey, Sun and Ski Sports on North May and in Sooner Mall. Don't go outside till you go to Sun and Ski Sports. They got all the top names. North Face, Patagonia, Mountain Hardware, Sorrel Boots, Ugg Boots, everything you need to go outside in this Oklahoma winter. But don't go outside till you go to Sun and Ski Sports first. North May Avenue, 10109 North May, and in Sooner Mall. We'll be right back after this. 
it's Tommy time. It's time for smiling, styling, and profiling in your cool and comfortable as an ocean breeze Tommy Bahama fashion for men and women from Pinpoint Resource. From head to toe, Pinpoint has the ultra cool quality name brand fashions like Alan Edmund, Johnston Murphy Shoes, Enro Shirts, and Bill Stacky. Great fashion, great value, and always great customer service. Pinpoint Resource, where value exceeds our customers' expectations. Pinpoint Resource, 50 Pin Place. Hi, it's Sam at Louie's Grill and Bar, reminding you that the weather is hot. So come cool off at Louie's and try one of our delicious salads, like our turkey chicken club salad. At Louie's, where you come for the food and stay for the fun. Why have people trusted Sam's Optical for over 30 years for their eyeglass needs? I, I, I think I'm the new kid on the block with Sam's uh, As a matter of fact, when I came here, I wasn't coming here to buy glasses. I was coming here to get some information to where the doctor's office was next door. And just the avions and the atmosphere. After they gave me the information I needed, I went to my eye doctor. Then I came back in and felt like I was at home. Sam's Optical for over 30 years, bringing you the best prices and service at any of Sam's locations. Lorick Ranch, 4111 West Reno in Oklahoma City is where you'll find the perfect blend of elegance and rustic to fit any room in your home. Living room suits, dining rooms, bedrooms, and the den. And the kids are going to love our bunk bed selection. So whatever home or room you're looking to decorate, Lorick Ranch has you covered. Welcome to Lorick Ranch, where rustic meets elegance. Y hablamos español. Lorick Ranch, 4111 West Reno in Oklahoma City. Ready to get rid of that old mower and move up to a Honda? Well, you couldn't have picked a better time. Choose from 10 different models with features you just won't find on any other mower. Whether you decide on the rock-solid HRR series or the amazing HRX series, you owe it to yourself to check out these incredible mowers and see what sets Honda apart from all others. Visit the website you see here for specials going on right now and find the Honda Power Equipment dealer nearest you. Honda Lawn Mowers. Very smart. And welcome back to the OU Football Bowl Edition. Rick Heath, Mark Rogers with you from Sam's Optical, 74th and South Walker. If you're needing frames for your eyeglasses, come see this fabulous selection of designer frames for you ladies, sport frames for you guys, anything you need for the kids. All of that available here at a family-friendly atmosphere at Sam's Optical, 74th and South Walker. They also have two other locations in the Midtown area, excuse me, Tri-Cities area, and in Edmond at Sam's Optical. Also want to thank some wonderful sponsors this year, the Trails Golf Club in Norman. Trails Golf Club wants to say Happy New Year and Merry Christmas to all their many, many friends out there from the Trails Golf Club in Norman. Also, Sun and Ski Sports. Sun and Ski Sports, North May Avenue and Sooner Mall. The best Christmas gifts available for outdoor enthusiasts available at Sun and Ski Sports in Oklahoma City and Norman. And the Shack Seafood Restaurant featuring the best Cajun food and the freshest oysters in the metro area. They got three great locations. Ed Noble Parkway in Norman just west of 63rd and Broadway Extension and May and Memorial. For the best and freshest seafood, go to the Shack Seafood and Oyster Bar. Mark, one of the things that we're going to talk about is the Final Four. Right. It's, it's all come about first time. I think it's garnered more excitement than I had envisioned. How about you? Yeah, I think it really has. I mean, there's a lot of discussion about conferences getting left out, and it came down to some weird games. The final weekend, Florida State, they just kept somehow finding a way to win and kept in that Final Four. Uh, and I think it was the Big 12 was just a victim of circumstances. I don't think that it's anything that they have to revise one way or the other. Ball bounces here or there. They could have two teams in the playoff. So I think my advice for the Big 12 is, one, have a better marketing campaign. Two, don't have to hand out your championship trophy before the final <laughs> game has been played. Yeah. Tell the committee, hey, this is our champion. Uh, and, and then, then go about your business. And then Baylor play yeah, later that's on right. the day. That wasn't more of a championship game than TCU and Iowa State. That was a bad, bad move marketing-wise. And, well, you know, and, and the one true champion was they, well, they had one, but what they need is one true concept. Yeah. You know, they right. just find out what they want to do and just stick with it. It was in the league rules. I, part of the problem was is that the coaches voted – to have co-champions. The reason the coaches did is because it's an incentive-laden contract that they have, yeah, and so they, they're going to get a bonus. They, they get money out of it. If you tie for the championship, you're still going to get your bonus. I mean, they don't have to have the league decide it. 
I just I think that it was a it was a big mess. But that's like marketing and saying we got the best hamburgers in town that only serving fish sandwiches. Yeah. Well, we had hamburgers before, but now we got fish sandwiches. Right, right. But uh, you know, with all that being said, I, I agree with you. Just Big 12, just sit tight, and next year we'll see how it goes on. If there's a problem next year, then it might be time to address it. But right now, one week out from the bowl selection, as you said, look like maybe two. Baylor and TCU if Florida State gets beat, you know, or right. if Ohio State doesn't win in such a fashion. Well, I thought Wisconsin would beat Ohio State. I, I couldn't believe that. He just kept seeing Ohio State score, score, and score. And uh, that margin of victory, I think, weighed on the committee. The fact that uh, Ohio State has a great name, reputation, fans, power, money, influence behind the Big Ten. Got them in. Got them uh, in. They would have lost. They'd have been out. So would have uh, Florida State who had to have a uh, you know late touchdown to beat Georgia Tech. You know, in Florida State, nobody on the committee liked them. They kept moving them down, trying to get a reason to get them out of there. That all Florida State kept doing is winning. Uh, let's talk though about the first matchup. Ohio State, Alabama uh, in the Sugar Bowl. Your thoughts on that matchup? Well, coaching. I mean, it's a powerhouse coaching matchup. You got Urban Meyer and you got Nick Saban, and those are the two best coaches in college football right now, today. I mean, if you look back, there's guys that have had historically better records, but Urban Meyer's system is tremendous. You put in a third quarterback, doesn't matter. They keep going and scoring and putting up a lot of points. They had a terrible game against Virginia Tech, and they overcame that and were dominant the rest of the year. They had very few even close uh, encounters. They're the kind of opposite of Florida State. And uh, I think this is going to be a pretty good game, but I, I like Alabama. Well, I like Alabama, but, you know, I like Alabama to win the game. Let me say this. I don't like Alabama. Okay? <laughs> I want to clarify that. Okay. I like Alabama to win the game, but I don't like Alabama. So for that reason, I hope Ohio State wins. Yeah, you know, that's one of those things that, you know, everybody loves – that I know loves to hate Alabama. Yeah. You know, and so if they can get beat, that clears the way for whoever's on the other side of the bracket to be a leg up if they win, you know, for the national championship. Alabama's won enough that Saban gets enough, you know, pats on the back, and I'm ready to see him get like the last bowl game. Um, but with that being said, Alabama probably has got the best all around team in the final four. Yeah, I think so. Uh, you know, now Ohio State, you know how bad it was for Oklahoma looking back. Two quarterbacks. Well, they're down to the third quarterback, yeah. and they win in their bowl game in, in unbelievable fashion. They have an offensive system, and they play to it, and it shows. I mean, that's Urban Meyer's great coaching. All right, uh, Oregon and um, Florida State. And as we said earlier, all Florida State does is keep winning. I think this is it for them, though. I, I, Jameis Winston has been great bringing his team back, but the guy on the other sideline, the Heisman Trophy winner, Marcus Mariota, is capable of doing the same thing. And, and Oregon really picked up a lot of confidence. I just don't think, you know, statistically, when Florida State won the national championship last year, they're just dominant on defense, dominant on offense, all their statistics. This year they're in the middle of the pack. It's not the same team. I think Oregon wins. I, th I think Oregon wins too. I like Oregon. I like their style of offense. I like how they do it. I like their uniform. I like everything about Oregon. So I'm an Oregon fan. I don't like Florida State. I hope Oregon wins. It would be a great matchup, Oregon against Alabama or Ohio State. And I think Oregon wins it all, which is my pick and your pick for the final. I'm going to go with Alabama. I think Alabama will be able to neutralize Oregon on the line of scrimmage in the championship game. One last thing, your prediction on the uh, OU Clemson game. I, you you said which team was going to show up. We got to be able to figure that out. I, I think I think Oklahoma's better than Clemson. I, I just I think they'll find a way to win the game. Uh, I'm going to say 31-27. I, I got a 38-35. Oh, it's going to be a high score, high score, but I think OU wins it. That's going to do it for the OU Bowl selection here for Mark Rogers. I'm Rick Heath. We'll see you next time on the OU Bowl Show.